Hey guys, this is Virginia the Buckeye Gamer here and I'm actually back um, with a video topic that I've been meaning to cover for quite some time. So I started a uh, quick uh, backstory on myself. I started gaming really young. Um, I would say probably before I started kindergarten. The first game that I recall playing uh, was Super Mario Brothers 3 on my cousin's NES. And I, I didn't know what I was doing at first. Um, but the fact that I could just push these little buttons and make Mario do stuff, um, I thought was the best thing ever. And that is pretty much what cemented me, um, as a gamer. Now, of course, over the years, if you started gaming as a child, your tastes do change as you get older for the most part. Um, and there's just games that you loved when you were small or, you know, younger, um, that just don't resonate with you the same way as an adult. Um, and that's what I'm going to cover in this video today. Um, I have a stack of games over here um, that are in my collection that I played the heck out of as a kid. Um, but now as an adult, it's, it doesn't really have the same appeal to me. Now these games, I don't, I don't necessarily want to say that I hate them. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have them in my collection. Um, but I just, I don't have the same like excitement and joy that I felt back in the day. So we're going to start off actually, um, I'm actually going to try to put these in a certain order only because I actually have a franchise in here that, um, I do want to go into length about. So I'm going to start off with an N64 game called Hey You Pikachu. Um, and now admittedly, I think this is made more for little kids. Like, you know, when, when I got that, I was about 11 or 12. Um, so basically what you do on this, it's like a little, uh, I, I, I would call it life simulation. Um, because you, you basically you have Pikachu here and there was a microphone that you could attach to the N64. I actually don't have it at the moment. Um, but you could talk to Pikachu and, you know, give him commands and different things to do and look for and whatnot. Um. It was, it was a nice concept back in the day. I actually, again, had a lot of fun with it, um, even though it was one, wasn't one of the most popular Pokemon games from back then, but I did really enjoy it. I did have problems with communication and, you know, expressing myself at that age, and I think that game actually helped me open up. So it does have a special place in my heart for that aspect, but trying to go back and playing it now just doesn't work. Um, it's mainly registers like higher pitched voices. Um, and even when I was like 11, 12 years old, I did have times where I had um, a hard time getting Pikachu to understand me, probably for that reason. Um, but again, I do have, it, it does hold a special place in my heart, even though the game just isn't as fun as I remember. And then this next one is Disney's Storio, Storio? Story Studio Move On. Uh, now I think this was actually a port of a PC game because Disney had these interactive storybooks. I, I think that's what they were called, if I'm wrong, correct me. Um, that you could play on the computer and they were actually a lot of fun back in the day. Um, but basically you take Milan through these different levels um, and there's certain objectives that you have to meet. So again, back in the day, I just, I loved games like this. Like, you know, as a kid, I was, I was easy to impress. That's all I can really say. Um, so really any kind of game that I got, I loved. Even if maybe deep down that I, now that I look at it, I kind of question myself as to why. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think growing up though, you most of the time don't have a very uh, large amount of games. Now some kids do. Um, I know some personally who did, but me... I would get them like on birthdays and Christmas, um, occasionally, sometimes in between, like if I was, you know, doing chores and saving money, I could buy my own games. But most of the time it was birthdays and Christmas. Um, and sometimes if I had a really good report card and things like that. Um, but that, those are really the only times that I got, um, that I got games without having to work for them. So I held on to them because that, you know, that was all that I had. So, and I think that's part of the reason why I love this so much is because it was one of the handful of games that I had as a kid, at least for the PlayStation. 
Um, but I, I liked I liked Mulan anyway, and I think that was another reason too is that anything with Mulan's face on it, I had to give a shot. Um, but trying to again go back and play this, I actually tried it not long ago. Um, it just it didn't have the same. I just I, I couldn't get into it. Um, I'll keep it in my collection though, just for nostalgia's sake. But probably will never play it again. Now this next one might come as a surprise, um, but that is Croc and Croc 2. Now, admittedly back in the time, back in the day, this was actually a really good platformer. Now, my problem mainly is I beat this game when I was a kid. Like I, I could get through it no problem. But again, going back and playing it, I'm like, I'm terrible at it and I don't know why. But, uh, I don't know, this one might be a little unfair to put in here, but I just, I am terrible at this game now. And Croc 2, the same thing. I don't know what my problem is with these. Um, but I wish, I wish I was better at that because I could probably still enjoy it and it wouldn't be on this list. But I don't know. I do not know what is wrong with me that I cannot get this game when I got it so easily as a kid. Um, now, these last few... I'm going to kind of group together only because they're of the same franchise. So these are all licensed games. Um, and as you know, licensed games don't necessarily have the best reputation for being good quality. But um, I have here, we got Rugrats, Search for Reptar, Rugrats and Paris the Movie game, and Rugrats Scavenger Hunt. Now, I could actually probably group all of the Rugrats games in here because I was a Rugrats junkie as a kid for years. Until Pokemon came out, this was like my number one thing. Like I had Rugrats clothing, I had socks, shoes, toys, my sheets and blankets and pillows were even Rugrats. Um, but yeah, like I wanted Rugrats everything. Like I was obsessed. I was one of those kids who was obsessed. Um, but yeah, I could actually group all the Rugrats games in here because I play pretty much every one. And again, I loved them as a kid. Well, the exception would be totally Angelica, but that is a video for another day. Um, I don't have all of them on my collection. I do have a Game Boy Color game floating around somewhere. Um, but again, it it goes back with the Mulan game. The fact that it had the Rugrats logo and the characters on it, I had to give it a shot. Um, but, but again, I just, it doesn't appeal to me because these are made, these are made pretty much again for younger kids. And as an adult, it just doesn't hold the same appeal anymore. Now, I will keep, obviously I'm going for complete N64 collection, so these will stay with me. Um, and I actually do have the PlayStation 1 version for uh, Rugrats in Paris, but I forgot to grab that. But uh, I would have to say back in the day, this was actually my favorite one. So... What, uh, basically, you play as Tommy and you're on the search uh, for Reptar puzzle pieces. Um, now, I beat this game a couple of times, um, but even though I only played a couple of times, like, or not played it a couple of times, beat it a couple of times, I played this game to death. Now, this actually is not the original copy that I had as a kid. I bought this again. Um, I think, it, I, and I can't remember if this was an eBay purchase or if I found this at a local retro store. Um, but I got it a few years back um, to have in my collection. And I do I do wanna say that when I put this in again after all these years, I did enjoy it at first. You know, it was a nice walk down memory lane. Um, but still, once again, I might sound like a broken record. It just doesn't have that same charm and didn't spark, any, spark the joy like it did when I was younger. So again, it's not, it's not gonna leave my collection anytime soon at least. But yeah, again, when you're an adult, your taste in games do change. Like, I'll give you an example. Like, I didn't play a mature rated game until I was in my early mid 20s. Um, my husband and I actually purchased an Xbox One together. That was our first console that we got uh, with each other. And I was out looking for a couple of games, and my the first game that I got uh, was Call of Duty Ghosts. Um, the retro store, which is actually closed now, had it pretty cheap. 
Um, but uh, yeah, that was my first experience with an M rated game. And um, I do see a lot of them are charming. You know, there's there's some that I do avoid. But anyway, I'm, I'm kind of getting off topic here. Um, but yeah, that's um, my little stack of games here that I just, I loved growing up. I could play them for hours upon hours on end. But I just can't anymore. Um, as an adult, I just, I don't enjoy them the same way that I did back then. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and if, you, if you'd like, uh, comment down below with games you played as a kid and just love to death. But going back as an adult, it just doesn't appeal to you the same way anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I'm curious to know everybody's answers because this is a, again, this is a topic I've been wanting to do for a while and just hasn't been the right time to record it. So let me know what your guys' opinions are um, of those games from way back when. Um, and then just leave a general comment down below if you like and subscribe if you wish. Um, I do want to thank everybody. Um, I'm kind of late, late to announce this, but I did hit 100 subscribers. I think at the time of recording this, um, I was at 107. So I am very excited. Um, I know a good friend of mine um, who was very active on YouTube, at least, you know, for the size of his channel, wanted to be here for this moment, but he unfortunately is no longer with us. And that's Dr. Josh the Real Gamer. Um, I know he wanted to celebrate with me and, you know, he was encouraging me every step of the way. So kind of sad that he's not here, but I'm going to keep this channel going. Um, I want to get it in a good, solid direction. And who, know, who knows what will happen? Maybe my channel will take off. Maybe it'll stagger. It's hard to tell. But I enjoy doing this. So, um, but you guys stay tuned for more videos. Um, I have a few pickups coming up. Um, can't wait to go over that. I do have some other topics to cover, but again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and I will catch you all later. Keep on gaming.